why do I feel as a medical provider that most women should be offered or being treated with GLP-1 therapies? My name is Josh McGaffick, leading medical provider for Primal Health and Wellness, semaglutide and tirzepatide expert. When I'm speaking with women during a consultation or anything else moving forward, it's, it's really hard to have them understand that there are options, that this is a newer drug, they are hearing a lot about it for weight loss, but what we're seeing in the thousands and tens of thousands of clients that we have is a lot of positive results for other amenities or other qualities, just not for weight loss. It's truly you're seeing with you know PCOS and endometriosis and fatty liver. But when I'm speaking with these clients, what I've seen with feedback is yes, they're losing weight gradually and healthy, but also they are feeling better. And when I speak with someone, I said, usually as a female, you're fighting a war on three fronts. Reason number one, if you've had children, there's postpartum, you know, there's hormonal imbalance or hormonal disruption. To understand that, like, it doesn't matter if, you know, how old your child is, how old you are, how old you were when you had that child, you're not the same person as you used to be. So we always explain like, you know, if you expect to get down to that sophomore year of high school weight at 105, but it's not what you weigh, it's how you look and how you feel to actually feel like you again. Reason number two, why I feel that most women should be on GLP-1 therapies is it's not sounding age discriminating or sexist, but you know, there is the perimenopause, menopause and postmenopause factor. You know, there's more hormonal disruption or more hormonal imbalance so how oftentimes more than not do I hear a woman say during a consultation or just out in general public or during a podcast, I'll say, Josh, you don't understand. I've tried a personal trainer, a dietitian, metformin, thyroid, PCOS, endometriosis, you know, ephedra, phenermine, adipex, Qsimia, you know, keto, Adkins, Weight Watchers, stomach sleeve, um, you know nothing works. I eat a piece of lettuce and I gain three damn pounds. Like what the hell is it going to take? And I'm just sitting there with a smirk saying, just try the shots. Like it's an opportunity to, you know, have a genre of medication that is not a stimulant. You know, all those phenermines and adipex or ephedra or cusimia, it's a stimulant. So you're shutting off the mechanism to eat or drink completely. And when that occurs, yeah, you might lose weight fast and rapidly, but the studies are showing coming off those medications, you're gaining back 120% of rebound weight, or you're putting yourself at extreme risk of the side effects. You know, it's like jet fuel on your heart rate and your blood pressure, even your anxiety or dry mouth. So that is where I kind of come in and say, you know, it's a genre of medication that you get to control your dose with us. Um, and, and what works for you might not work for your friend or your sister. And what works for them might not work for me. Everyone's different along their whole journey. The third reason I feel that most women should be on GLP-1 therapies is simply because providers in the insurance world were handcuffed to what we can offer. You know, how oftentimes do you have a provider say, well, you know, if you have PCOS or anything else that way, but really think about insulin resistance and cortisol. You keep going in for a level four visits and 99214 and come back this month and come back that, you know, next month, here's your copay. But we do lab work, we check your thyroid, and then, you know, oh, you need to have a little bit more exercise. You need resistance training. You need to watch your carbs or your sugars and less in, more out. Um, you know, try this phenermine, try this Qsimia, or here's metformin. That's all we have to offer you. And the insurance company says, well, this is what our protocol is until this genre of medication comes out. So, you know, that third factor is insulin resistance and cortisol. The medication is great for weight loss. You know, as you lose weight, it's designed to help you feel fuller quicker and, you know, a gastric emptying delay drug. That way that food noise or the cravings are, are gone for the most part and you're not eating as much, therefore you lose weight. But where we're finding medication results and efficacy is the insulin resistance and cortisol to decrease or deplete those. That way you might have a woman say, hey Josh, I'm losing weight. You know, I've lost 12 pounds, I feel great, but I'm also noticing I'm, I'm feeling less inflammation or less bloat, or I notice that, you know, I'm having more natural energy throughout the day. So I'm not reaching for the Starbucks or the Dunkin' or the sugary caffeinated drink to try to pull me through, or even that I might have less mom brain fog. You know, what's that about? And 
you know, one factor that I love to hear from clients is, hey, I'm actually sleeping better. You know, what kind of voodoo medicine did you give me? And I'm sitting there with a smirk saying your cortisol is within limits for you or you, how you feel or the insulin resistance, the medication's working pretty much. But why are you getting better sleep? You know, I see a lot of people, even myself included, when I was on the medication, it's, I felt like I was sleeping deeper. I was noticing that I could remember dreams more, but I even woke up feeling refreshed or energized or recharged and not that general malaise or fatigue or just exhaustion like Groundhog Day over and over again. And it, regardless if you slept 10 hours or not, you went to bed feeling gross and bloated and full after dinner and you would even wake up that way. So those are major factors of why I feel, you know, and what I see this medication having results for men and women, but a, a lot of women are coming back saying, I, I feel like me again. You know, this is just not about weight loss. It's about feeling like you and, and understanding, you know, there's the major factors. There's postpartum, there's perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. There's PCOS, endometriosis, hormonal disruption or imbalance, and, and ultimately that insulin resistance and cortisol. So when you when you go to look at these factors or you're with another company or provider and they're just trying to push weight loss you know we've seen a tremendous amount of feedback in our check-ins with our clients to say 10,000 plus clients of a lot of females noticing that there's more about this than just weight loss so for more tips and tricks you know during this podcast or anything else please like follow and share our social media platforms and we're looking forward to hearing from you